Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. My name is Neil Kumar and uh, yeah, just to give you a little brief about this video that this video is on the data science roadmap and if you are among those who are looking to transition their life into the data science domain or who is a data science enthusiast in turn or looking for a job in data science or who have some sort of interest in data science and they are willing that later on they will be joining data science or any of the course. Just a small disclaimer, this video I solely prepare for those people who are uh, right now you know, looking their transition to the data science and they do not have the reality, the idea of reality. What exactly, how exactly it looks like to become a data scientist. They are from some BPO, KPO industries or some software industry, but they have heard a lot of words that is going around data science right now in the industry could be the reason could be because of lot of marketers or a lot of false promises that are being made by them it could be the example of this could be preparing a data scientist in three months or preparing a full stack data scientist in six months providing job placement as well as job guaranteed enrolling yourself you to the job guaranteed programs this is also a story of me before i can start quickly with my video and the real content that I have to offer to you people. I would like to request you, if you are the one among what I mentioned, you should completely watch this video till the end because this is not only gonna help you, but also this is gonna give you the idea that what exactly, what is the reality of a data scientist. It's not that easy to become a data scientist and to follow the roadmap. It's a long journey where you have to, you should have the persistence and perseverance. So. Let me tell you about myself before I start the video. My name is Sunil Kumar and I was earlier from 2017 to 2022 as working with Accenture Solution Private Limited as a trust, trust and safety associate. Where I was working in BPO uh, uh, you know, industry, I used to handle the task of machine learning. However, my pay scale was, pay scale was too less and which made me you know, to, to think, is there any way that I can transition myself to the the, to the industries that there, there is very less coding required and there's less effort that I have to put day to day basis and I can become something which is, uh, you know, which, which I may admire myself. So that's when data scientist was or the, I, I would say kind of a ads came to the Google and inspired me to become the one. I've joined a lot of courses. When I was doing this, I was going through this page. Exactly. So this song was my motivation. Why? Why exactly? Because I was going through a lot of emotional, you know, decision making. I would say, I would, I would say, I was very impulsive during then. Then I, 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 I was thinking that I don't have any other way, way out of this particular trap that I'm here in Accenture stock. So this was the thing. Then I slowly started taking up the courses from the Simply Learn and the Almavet. It turned out to three years for me to complete the entire journey. And finally, I became a data scientist with one of the MNCs. Then recently, I did transition after five, six months. And I was again, you know, you know I, I again started my job as a data scientist with the New York Analytics. I worked for two, three months. And then due to the recession and present economical condition, I had to lose my job. I'm going to explain you the steps of the data science and the entire broader term of the roadmap which basically covers all the aspects of the data science from the scratch to the end. This is not the end and this will not be, you know, uh, I would say this is not the last. Definitely there are a lot of more ads on to this, which I will be explaining in coming upcoming videos. Let me start with the data science. So exactly data science is and how exactly this term, you know, came, was going. So, if you go to the earlier era, uh, they, they used to be intern. They 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 use uh, they used to be internet and pre-internet stage or pre-internet stage uh, era where people used to you know maintain sort of information in the ledger. They used to manually do the entry or manually maintain the records. Because of that, there was a problem because that it, it might happen that sorry, there was a problem associated with the security and not only security the data was not being consumed or analyzed. 
so due to for that problem to enhance now you know internet era came where we started electronically generating the data and handling and uh, managing the data electronically over the internet or using using some of the data they they were system or the data database system slowly it became a little you know congestive to understand each and every entry and each and every uh, you know records and and analyze and making pattern out of it so there was now as the demand as the electronic data got, uh, got increased as the electronic data was increasing so there was a new term which was which was then you know kind of i i would say then coin so let me take you to in that particular data science uh, you know thing uh, and let me explain you how exactly this happened so during that time so there was a data and the science it was a combination of the data and the science when i say science specifically mathematics and the various capabilities of the man when combining these two things with the artificial intelligence so it turned out it turned out that you know data science is definitely going to be something which going to consume the data and make meaningful insights out of it which definitely ultimately you know people going to use it for the business purposes or to enhance their revenue or to you know cut the cost etc etc so let me start quickly with the data science and its broader terms and technologies what exactly it started and what end all comes under data science and what end all is required to become a data scientist or to complete the road map of a data scientist this is the broader view that you can see it start with the data science and then this these are a few a road map or i would say uh, you know the, the graphs that i have prepared in a hierarchical manner which basically explain the entire data science entire it is this is not the last definitely there there are there are few more steps further on uh, uh here after so let me quickly start with the data science so, so this is the broader term data science which combines science and data when i say science especially you can you can take the capabilities of the math and the data now in the data science there are three four things that are associated the very first thing i would say ai artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is a broader term where you are you you are basically training the machines it can be robots it can be algorithms it can be uh, you know anything any app that you are preparing so once you move ahead from there there is another thing that is required is called programming and programming it can be anything like r language python language sql or or fas in few instances so programming is something which is uh you can consider it as a computer code where you are typing in some language to the computer and computer is understanding your instruction and executing the the process of output yeah so now coming to the third broader step step that is the data i have written raw data because most of the time in data science we are utilizing raw data i myself being data scientist have been often dealing with the raw data where we barely get the structured data prepared to us so you have to interact with the raw data so raw data also have few source i'm going to explain you uh, it in later but before i uh, explain it i wanted to explain all the broader term under the data science so this is the fourth broader term that is a business domain understanding of the business is is very much important this is what when i got to know when i was working as a data scientist in the some of the mnc's so now i wanted to tell you that this part which is the fourth part business domain it is never been taught anywhere nobody almost none of the institute teaches this particular acumen the business acumen and the fifth one is the the free source library of uh, tools that you have how exactly you can what are the tools required for the data scientist so these are the five broader things i have also highlighted with the sticky notes if you see if we dig dig deeper into every steps we will be uncovering few more things what exactly comes in there what what does that mean how it led to how you know we have we have spam right now we have spam filtering uh, email spam filtering system that we have 
how exactly email goes to the spam, all email primary, important, etc., etc. How exactly the classification happens? What are those behind the scene? What are what are those algorithms who are working? So I'm gonna explain you going to the all the five steps just to just to explain you once again. We talked about the programming. We talked about the artificial intelligence. We also talked about the data, and we also talked about the open source. Uh, uh, tools that we have, for example, collaboratory, uh, Jupyter notebook, etc., etc. Also, we understood. We talked about the business domain. These are five big pillars inside the data science. Without this, data science is not complete. Now, digging into each and every steps, let me start with the artificial intelligence. Basically, in artificial intelligence, is a broader term. It in, it contains machine learning, short for ML. Then robotics, where you have certain some sort of robots who are making the human action, who are doing some tasks and to making humans' life better. We have deep learning, which makes which mimics human brain and making use of human brain and doing the various cognitive uh, tasks. For example, object detection. For example, image detection. This sort of uh, you know, algorithm comes under deep learning. So th there's another uh, uh, term which is which is called computer vision. You are making so as the name suggests, you have visual data. You have you have visual data and you have computer. When I say computer, this set of tool or devices that are consuming visual data. It can be images or the video and making pattern out and looking for the insights, trends, and also utilizing those data to train themselves so that they can be better utilized for other tasks nlp nlp is short for the natural language processing as the name suggests we are here talking about the natural languages that human speaks we have natural languages like like we have as a human being we have languages english hindi etc etc so so those are the techniques that machine learns from under under this process NLP. So now uncovering and going a little deeper, one layer deeper to the artificial intelligence and understanding how it looks in a broader page. So here, if you can see, I have zoomed a little less my screen, but I hope you are able to see. So this this is how the entire roadmap looks like. Artificial intelligence, it has internally a few major things right now nowadays the 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 world of generative ai you must have heard of chat gpt is definitely booming around the globe and behind those chat gpts you know there are a few models which basically works so now starting with the starting with the few concepts uh, uh, which comes in in generative ai uh, and uh, i mean which comes in artificial intelligence is machine learning Deep learning and uh, generative AI started starting discussion from the machine learning. So we have when we go deep, a little, you know, one one layer deeper in machine learning. We have these just to give you a reminder. These all are very basic steps, which means these are just like you know A B C. How a, when a person want to speak English, he has to learn, she has to learn uh, A B C. Right. So this is exactly ABC of data science. So this machine learning is a broader term in which you have a lot of smaller terms like supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning, reinforcement learning, semi-supervised or self-supervised machine learning. When we talk about the supervised machine learning, let me just zoom into this particular part and discuss this. Supervised machine learning is a made up of those things. We are, we are training or supervising our model. Yeah, we are telling that this is this is shoe. How just like exactly when you have a kid and you tell you teach you you know you kind kind of teach your kid. You say this is shoe, this is person, this is human. You know, that cha cha taya, etc. etc. So doing then, it keeps remembering those things and it keeps on classifying the other example based upon the example that you have taught to your kid. It's the same way you teach your machines by giving some relevant examples and you tell, just tell me what exactly it looks based upon what we have taught you. So those are two kind of 
regression and the classification in the when we talk about the regression in general term we are discussing about the continuous variable prediction when i say continuous continuous variable it can be in the decimals 2.5 2.5 2.55 or 1 2 3 4 something like numeric form and in this in this specific phenomena of supervised machine learning you have two things dependent variable or independent variable for example tomorrow is likely to be rain how exactly you going to predict it you may have independent variable that today is cloudy tomorrow may rain it's a based on conditional probability which basically helps us understand that today tomorrow is dependent upon today so today here is independent variable some similar sort of things happen in this particular scenario when it happens for the continuous variable we call it regression when it happens for the classification when we say i take the example of the email when we are spam all important all folders spam folder important folder draft folder how exactly behind the scene let me tell you behind the scene there is a classification model which is integrated with the, this particular uh, app that is uh, basically gmail app so behind the scene in the production environment there is a model which is doing this work a well designed or well defined model a, a, a model with a great you know uh, precision recall accuracy i'll tell you later part what exactly this term i mentioned is there are basically evaluation matrix basically evaluation matrix which tells how good your model is performing in term of certain things so this is the classification so when we talk in these models like we are discussing about supervised supervised model we have linear regression k nearest neighbor fbm uh, you know decision tree and naives and neural networks so these can be used as the as the model i mean the base baseline model is something which is very sim simple and which is very easy to understand for anyone which which can model the linear relationships for example in this case we have linear regression so it will be modeling the linear relationship between dependent variable and the independent variable as i gave example tomorrow will be rain today is cloudy so today cloudy is the independent variable and rain is dependent variable so the relationship between these two is a linear in a way that's why it is a linear regression and we can use it as baseline model why because to see uh, because accurate because the score of the you know the matrix score that it will be rmsc uh, msc uh, etc etc it will be very less and from there on we can look for to improve this model when we say improvement of any model we we talk about the ensemble model so in ensemble model we have different techniques started with the bagging boosting and staking started with bagging as the name suggests bagging bagging is made up of two words bootstrap aggregation bootstrap aggregation when when we talk about the bootstrap the term bootstrap means you are combining certain set of data set and replacing the existing data set you are generating new combination of a data set and with the replacement of the original data set and aggregation means you are aggregating the results of the models in this particular way we have random forest which is consist of the decision tree i may also prepare a few videos regarding all each and every concepts and try explaining all these from the scratch since we we are limited on the time i am going to explain these very quickly in a zip so now we have boot we have boosting model in the as the name suggests it 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 can take it have the concept of the beat learner and the strong learner where the the, the model which performs not really good on particular observation it will be penalized and it will be next time fed to the another model so it penalize this works with a bunch of weak learners learners are creating a strong learners in a society for example you can take that. now coming to the stacking model in stacking model approach as the name suggests it is a stack one above another yeah so in this particular you have multiple models prediction you use that as input and create a mixed model which gives you the better and robust output prediction so now this was entire for the supervised learning now coming to the unsupervised machine learning so this is another part just under the machine learning which was under the artificial intelligence just to remind you so now unsupervised machine learning we have we have k mean clustering hierarchical clustering pca association rule mining i'm not going to go deep very deep into it because if i do so it may take another 2 hours to explain entire uh, road map 
So now k-amine clustering is something. It looks for the it is a distance distance based algorithm. It it kind of uh, calculates the distance to the near near y points or the data points, and it try to it try to cluster that particular data into the one one cluster. So in that way, there will be classification of group one. Similarly for the group two and group two, every time it it uh, it kind of calculates the distance, the centroids or the center point of every groups keeps on changing. Based upon that, the classification of groups keeps on happening. So now hierarchical clustering is just a little different from the k-min clustering. In hierarchical clustering, you provide the some of the data data points. It has two approaches: bottom up and top down, agglomerative and divisive. So these approaches. You provide entirely bulk data, bulk of the data, and then you say this is the you set your parameter that I need this many clusters, I need I need this many uh, clusters, that many clusters. So you start degrading your cluster into the smaller smaller chunks. The similar the, and, and the same way the vice versa of it happen. Where you provide very small clusters and you try you know distance matrix. You, you try utilizing the distance matrix based upon the distance matrix and the adjacent point. It keeps on. Preparing the bigger cluster. Now coming coming to the PCA, as the name suggests, uh, 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 you know, uh, principal component analysis. Basically, it is a feature selection technique as well. It can be utilized for the supervised and the unsupervised. As the definition I explained, you what exactly supervised is, and and just to explain once once again, what is unsupervised machine learning? As the name suggests, here you are not providing the labeled data. That is exactly why it is known as unsupervised. Machine learning. So in this unsupervised machine learning, a model is preparing cluster itself, and it is creating the label basically group one, group two, group three. Particular data points are under the category of group one, two, or three. It is widely used in the uh, you know lot of finance, finance and uh, uh, retail industries. I will be uh, covering up these uh, use cases later on. So now coming to the third part where we have uh, you know association rule. Association rule is something. Which comes under unsupervised machine learning is used for the user preference. For example, you are, take the example of Amazon recommendation. If you have you if you if you have bought if you bought something and you will be getting similar recommendation. For example, you are going to buy Colgate. You will be getting recommendation of Colgate plus uh, your toothbrush. So that is there is a association behind the scene. There is an association rule which is going to work there. Which basically provides, which basically understands the relationship between these two item and gives you these two item as a recommendation. So these these recommendations are two type: user based, item based. Just now I explained is example of item based uh, recommendation. Now talking about the user based recommendation, take the example of the Netflix. Take the example of the YouTube. When you are going to watch some video, it will be highlighting you. It will be giving you recommend as a recommendation says. Similar sort of video with the 90% confidence or the 95% confidence, which is matching. So this kind of recommendation is known as user-based user-based recommendation. And so now this is the this is the end of the story for the unsupervised learning. Discussing a little more about the machine learning third step, which is the reinforcement learning. So in reinforcement learning, I'm going to explain your definition. So definition tells that you are reinforcing something to learn. For example. Something is not pretty learned pretty well, so you are you are you are penalizing the model. You are telling this is not this is not done. You have incorrectly learned it. Just learn it again, and when it predicts rightly, model provides the uh, you know rewards. It tells you you are doing absolutely great. Keep doing the great. So this sort of examples are under the reinforcement learning. So example of these can be Q learning and deep Q learning. These are two models that can be used to You know, uh, uh, used for the uh, uh, this reinforcement learning. Now, talking about the third part, which is the semi-supervised or self-supervised learning. Normally, we we consider NLP task stands for natural language processing. As I explained, it it is a it is it is the understanding of the human natural languages. So, under this making use of NLP, you can make 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 use of sentiment analysis. Topic modeling, text analysis, speech recognition. As the name suggests, sentiment analysis. You are going to analyze the sentiment of particular document. 
in a in a in a normal in a layman term a particular document is just nothing but a particular particular line particular line or sentence let's say i am going to go to dubai let's say i i i, I feel very bad i feel sad so these are the sentiment there are sentiment which are associated with that and why exactly it is important because many people take the example of zomato they are understanding their feedback they they are taking the feedback from the customers and they are understanding their sentiment based upon the sentiment they come up with the marketing strategy or anything that the, that business and they look into the various parameter or let's say any parameter that business has to change so there that is when sentiment analysis is very much important topic modeling is something it tells you 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 give uh, you know a bunch of data and you tells what is exactly theme of this particular data for example i'll tell you a story I, I, like you can take example of right now I, i'm telling you a long story about the data data science roadmap so now what is in short term if i have to give a particular topic for this it will be data science roadmap so now coming to the third part which is test text actually it used it's supposed to be text sorry for my miswriting so it's supposed to be text analysis so for the text analysis you are basically analyzing the text and telling what text is contributing most and what what can be the important what cannot be the important what is consumable text what is not consumable text for and the fourth pillar that can be nlp you can use for the speech recognition text to speech and the name and the recognition for example for example the name and the recognition uh, example for this would be you are going to tell what what is this particular place is this mumbai is this bangalore is this some other place or are you going to do some certain similar sort of task so that comes under nlp task now discussing about the deep learning part since we are done with the machine learning part in artificial intelligence now there is a deep learning part which is now now it is very famous and popular for many things so now starting with the if you are if you are going ahead in the deep learning you have to understand basics about the neural network for this i would say calculus and linear algebra would be adding more advantage because it's it it, it utilizes a lot of maths uh, uh, you know uh, behind the behind the uh, under the hood which are which are importantly required for to learn the neural network so neural network as the name suggests it is mimic it is mimicry of the human brain how human brain works as you know that it it has a lot of exon and introns which carries the message, message and uh, electrical and uh, chemical messenger like neurotransmitters or or, or the another another uh, you know the chemical messengers that that basically facilitate the uh, uh, messaging between one neuron to the another and multiple those neurons when they combine together and decide the uh, you know what decision it might be you come for for to take, for to making the decision you know the multiple signaling and neurons that are in, involved which tells you that this can be the particular signal for the decision for example i wanted to go out right now or not or i should stop this video or not so there are a lot of neurons which are deciding internally and which is giving you uh, the final uh, decision that you should continue the video till the last now coming to the uh, you know this was the basic in the in the one step next or uh, one step ahead going in deep learning you will be again starting with the cnn which is convolutional neural network basically used for to you know detect the images or the object in particular image as the name suggests for the convolution neural network if i have to explain the basic architecture of the neural network i would say it is it is a function of neurons you have input layer you have hidden layer you have output layer from the input layer you provide your observations and in the hidden layer you initialize bait and biases to the neurons which basically are helpful for to understand the different different pattern in your data so based upon that there is also associated activation function which is basically used to create the linearity a non linearity in the function so non linearity tells you the that tells you to understand the complex pattern in the data set going from there you comes to the output you you find and calculate the gradient you perform two steps here back back for uh, forward uh, uh, you know feed and the back propagation so so now in back propagation you try to understand what is the difference between the output and the actual values you calculate the differences you adjust the bait and biases for the second time till it is optimal you keep on calculating the gradient and keep on adjusting this which is train we basically training the model which happens in back propagation step 
so this is the basic basic architecture of the neural network coming to the convolutional neural network it it is a little different from the basic neural network because as the name suggest it is performing the convolution convolution basically means if i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 and i have again 1 2 3 4 5 6 yeah so now assume both are two sequences which are going toward completely which are moving completely toward the negative direction one is going to the forward and one is going to the backward but in reverse manner where six will be facing first time one and then slowly similarly you know uh, one will be facing the six and moving ahead moving ahead this process is the convolutional process there the combination of two you know we say vector a and b will be generating a third example that could be c so that fashion happens in this particular you know uh, in particular model which is cnn also in this particular model you are not assigning the random weight and biases so that is a different thing that we you know don't do in a neural network what we do in here convolutional neural network and why exactly we do it because we are going to tell it to every neurons to understand the same feature in this case feature can be uh, edges of the image for example i have koala or i have anything let's say cat so what are the shape how what, what is the color of the cat what is the height of the cat and what 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 are the eyes of the cat how it looks like so which basically ultimately you know combine together and helps us in understand that whether this particular image is cat or but or the dog so it it works in this particular fashion and and go through the multiple layers if i say multiple layers there are multiple layers which are associated let's say fully connected layer before that they might be uh, you know the the soft max function which is basically activation function used uh, uh, in the hidden layer uh, to create the non linearity the uh, the, the non linearity would be same uh, uh, the principle or would say the working of non linearity will be same as i explained for the neural network so this is sort of things that happens and this is how once this happens every you know just to give you a little more understanding about cnn you have image and you have in image you have pixels so every particular area in the pixel is consists of the numbers so this is like a vector so this vector calculation happens uh, with the you know that we have the uh, in in our uh, neurons right so the numbers in the neuron and the vector so the the multiplication uh, some multiplication happens based upon that that multiplication it results in new matrix so now which which is basically number so now these matrix will further going on we will be performing the linearity or, or we will be uh, you know uh, uh, generating the uh, creating a single plan because there is a fully connected layer which does not take the three dimensional data it takes something which is called Uh, one dimensional so another step will, will be flattening it once you have performed the all the you know once you have gone through the uh, uh, you know i would say uh, you have you have correct you have prepared a map feature map i would say this is a specific term for the feature map where you have the associated data or the information or trends stored in particular layer it has to pass through the fully connected layer in order to reach to the output so in this particular layer you are flattening flattening this and passing to the fully connected layer and thereby you know moving forward to the output whether it is a cat or it is a dog this is how it works so now coming to the one step uh, forward transformer <coughs> uh, uh, models so now if you take example of chat gpt these are examples of the transformer model considering transformer models as the base of the chat gpt or the generative ai you should always understand what exactly a transformer is so transformer is this the there was a there was a paper which was published in the year of 2017 that was attention is all you need in that particular paper there was it, it was completely mentioned that it is you know there was there was another step actually which is cnn which is basically uh, which is basically rnn sorry i was explaining cnn but this this was the another step which is rnn which is the recurrent neural network basically sequence detection if you are providing a particular sequence of uh, text so in this particular sequence it it uh, rn rnn these models are not robust for the longer data for example if you are providing a bigger uh, paragraph to the rnn rnn will not be able to predict the next uh, next sequence properly 
the reason being because it does not have the understanding of the context and that is when these problem was overcame by the transformer transformer not only tells you to, to predict these future based upon the historical or the data set or, or the text that we have provided but it also tells understand the text uh, context of every words itself with every words for example my name is sunil so name and sunil how correlated they are how much important they are and sunil name and my how much important it is with the my or sunil something similar kind of combination it will it will do for all the words so in this way it will get better understanding of the context that what is important for this particular text or not so in this way transformer work and the architecture of time transformer consists of the input layer embedding layer decoding coding layer encoding layer in encoding layer again you have uh, you know something called multi attention layer and then it pass to the decoding layer where you again have two to three multi attention layer and then it pass through the activation softmax function coming final to the output and it is a auto regress it always perform auto regressive process which basically the prediction that is being done will be always used for the uh, as a output in the decoder part take the example of the chat gpt which is a decode model only basically it takes the prediction the predicted output for example whatever uh, text that it has predicted it take those prediction as a input prompt when i say prompt there is another entire another topic on the prompt engineering that i will be covering in some video later so this is how transformer architecture work and this is the base of the large language model considering chat gpt it is a large language language model why this is a large language model because these models are consist of billions of parameters which are very huge or bigger than the normal baseline model like linear regression logistic regression or any other neural network models so now coming to the another uh, uh, you know aspect is generative ai the one which i was explaining is a generative ai as the name suggests it is generating the content media etc etc based upon what kind of model that you are using as the baseline for example cnn it will be generating the video similar similar video Im images etc for example rnn it will be generating similar sort of the text or the text that is required in our response and the llm model discussing a little in depth about the generative ai there are few models which are very popular and right now there is a buzz around these models so these are known as large language models so gpt is a very small model which uses basically transformer architecture in order to predict uh, the the output so these models are specifically taught on the various tasks it can be multi you know multi model uh, approach that you are uh, training this model on the finance uh, on the healthcare on the retail on the coding on the data science on the science on the geography physics so these are the model which learn all these parameters how exactly learning happen behind the scene is from is called prompt engineering where you are basically writing something and giving the example to the model and telling that this is the example and this is the output of this and tell me what should be the what what will be the output now this the output of this particular model is called inference now coming a little one step deeper into it there are one zero shot one shot and two shot inferences that are associated with these models so zero shot shot inferences means you are not telling any example any single uh, uh, output you're not showing any any answers to the model and telling that predict i wanted to see how exactly you will be predicting and the one shot model is you are providing one example of the output you are telling this is the one output now you are providing similar example you are telling now you tell me what will be the output for this similarly for the few shot you are considering more than two or three examples and telling model to predict there is another which is a a uh, flan p5 it is actually as the name is flan so the where f stands for the fine tuning so it is a fine tuned model basically when i say fine tuning it can be prompt engineering it can be prompt fine from tuning so when i prompt engineering and the fine tuning when it comes to the fine tuning what exactly you are finding you are teaching the model on the specific parameter you are you are telling model that these these are the inferences these are these are the prompts so based upon these prompts you are providing multiple prompts multiple examples of the prompt to 
fine tune the model to make the model so robust for your use cases. Similarly, LLM, Word, and Bird. So these are the model which comes under LLMs. Now discussing about the another things which is a math. So which is a very basic. That's why I have kept it for the center. It is a very base of the data science. Why it is a base of the data science? Because it it is consist because entire data science is consist of the these uh, major uh, you know major topics. In this we have uh, uh, as every uh, you know model or the any 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 anything that we are seeing around in artificial intelligence or the large language model. In this we have math as a baseline. So considering from the linear regression, statistics, calculus. And the probability. This is the four pillar that is required when it comes to the data science to understand what exactly we should be doing going forward. So in statistics, there will be basic statistics considering and covering the mean, mode, median, mode, uh, standard deviation, variance, and what is the data distribution? How data is uh, distributed around the mean? What is the standard deviation? Some of the more concept that we can discuss in statistics is the z-score normalization. Standardization, normalization, and also t-test, z-test, which are basically statistical hypothesis tests to understand whether two particular phenomena how likely they are uh, to close to the each other. Now, in, in this, uh, we have calculus and the linear algebra, which basically explain you the differentiation and the integration concept, where exactly you will be understanding what exactly a vector is and what vector multiplication, etc., etc., happens, which basically comes in handy later when you are going to start your deep learning steps. So now coming to the probability, probability is very much important in the, in, in the data science because you are going to predict something based upon something. For example, tomorrow is going to, uh, giving you same example, tomorrow is going to rain. Today it is cloudy. So how much it is probable that tomorrow it is going to rain? So there is conditional probability under the hood which is associated with it and probability that's exactly why you, the probability is the base of data science and, and the math. So you should be very well aware of these concept when you are starting your data science journey. Now coming to the third part, which is the data or the raw data. We might have when you're working as a data scientist, we might have the data in structure, unstructured, semi-structured, video, image, text, and sensor format. When I say structure format, you might have data in tabular format. We consist of the rows and the columns. You have unstructured. The example of unstructured could be text data. I have given the uh, you know some of the examples video data text data image data these can be considered as the unstructured data so they are there are semi structured data which are structured and they are not structured also so basically mix of structured and unstructured data so to maintain these uh, these data you must have data storage system and to uh, and the knowledge of the data storage system when i say knowledge of data storage system there should be Always, the, the, you should understand how to manage and man, maintain, manage and curate, handle your data. So to handle, curate, manage, multiplicate, manipulate, uh, uh, you know, manipulate your data, you must have SQL knowledge, which because it is a it is a structured query language, which will basically interact with your databases or the data to fetch, manipulate, or the wrangle to wrangle the data. And the second. I would say you because nowadays it's a cloud environment and most of the organization are transitioning toward the cloud. So it's going to be a cloud journey. And for that reason, you should be knowing about the basics of AWS, Amazon Web Services and the basics of the Azure. I personally have worked with the Azure Databricks and also utilized Azure Data Factory and also Azure Blob Storage connecting to the Power BI where I used to post my prediction to the Azure Blob Storage and connecting Blob Storage to the Power BI thereby you know fetching the prediction over, over to over the that dashboard. So these are certain concept and aspect that you will be dealing with very usually. So now last but not the least this is the business domain, which is basically no in right, right now nobody in the industry or none of the you know certification providing institute or the online institute they provide the knowledge of this. Why? Because this is not included in the in the in their curriculum and they wanted to cover all the technical aspects. Let me tell you this is very much much important because I personally worked as a data scientist and I found. Business domain understanding of business domain is contributing 30 to 40 percent of your entire data science journey. So as per my experience, because if you have a solid understanding about the, about the any particular business domain, then only you know where to study, where to implement, and use my tools 
uh, and how exactly to implement and use my tools for particular use cases. In data science domain, I mean, talking about the business domain, we have finance, pharma industry, pharma healthcare, retail, commodity hedging, military, IT, BPO, KPO. I almost work with almost every, uh, you know, industry or the domain, considering from the finance, banking domain to the healthcare, retail, commodity, hedging, military. However, the fourth one, I, I, I think I need more explanation for this part. I will not be explaining in this particular video, well, but I will be keeping it for the next video. But for now, I can give you a little overview about how exactly you are leveraging once you have learned what I, what I, what I explained you till now. Once you learn this entire, what you will be achieving. Once you learn, you will be ready to implement your knowledge to the business. Considering business can be from the finance and the banking sector. In my case, as since I worked in university analytics, so we had a banking client. So they there was a the, the goal there was to uh, look for the personal loan journey and look for the credit credit score of the people based upon those uh, recommend them uh, whether you know understand whether they are going to likely take the loan or not. And also does do this uh, customer segmentation where segments the people based upon the high likely loan taker or low likely loan taker and. Also, which we, which we, can, we will be using for the campaign and marketing uses further onward. The second part was there, they wanted to, enha they wanted to enhance, enhance the digital journey for the personal loan because they found significant jump in the digital journey rather than meeting in person in the bank. So talking about the personal loan digital journey, they had another ask here that they wanted to increase the uh, you know, conversion rate of personal loan from 0. 1 to the 1 percent almost out of 10 out of, out of 10, 10 lakh people only 1000 people they were uh, you know successfully applying for the loan that that turns, turned out to be conversion rate of 0 0.1 percent so it has to come to the 0 uh, 1 percent i found personally found some of the challenging while working with this project because i never worked in this particular industry before so there was a domain knowledge that was lacking because of that that there was a lot of problem that was associated while completing this particular project Coming to the healthcare and pharma, I'm not going to elaborate a, a little more on this, but you can understand from the description as I mentioned. You can do the hospital cost analysis and also you can understand that the particular hospital is running, uh, is, is doing some mal practices over the, you know, from the historic data that you gain. And also you can understand the early detection of the disease. If a particular person is going to die, if a particular person is going to have this particular disease or not in advance, if the symptoms are likely to come after one week or two weeks or not, etc., etc., or the drug demand, this particular hospital required particular drug, whether in next two months this drug will be available or not, whether demand for this drug will be high or no. So similarly, discussing about the retail, here you are basically performing the customer segmentation task and the sales prediction. When I say customer segmentation task, you are basically segmenting your customer with the high priority, low priority and the medium priority. When I say high priority, the person whose monetary is reaching really high and, and they are very frequent buyers. So those are high priority. In contrast to opposite where people are not buying at all and their recency frequency and monetary rate is very less. So similarly for the sales prediction, for example, few goods are not getting sold in particular region. What was the region? Just to understand the region, a reason and, and if this remains same, what will be the future steps that we have to take? And for to do that, we need to do the prediction. Then this will be the prediction if you kept the particular situation same for, for so so long. This, this, this will be a situation that it will be, you will be ending up with. So now commodity hedging, I also work with one of my uh, client for this uh, where I, I implemented some of the time series uh, problems. When I say time series problem, I think I have not mentioned it and in this entire roadmap time series problem, I'll be mentioning this time series problem here. So time series problem is based upon the time. So you are predicting time for the tomorrow, day after tomorrow, weekly basis, monthly basis, minute, secondly basis, minutely basis, how hourly basis, yearly basis even. So that time predictions happens based upon few assumptions that time series had. Once you validate those assumptions as a normal modeling process, you convert entire data to the numerical form and you feed your model, you feed your data to the model. Based upon the data that you have feed fed, now model will try to predict. So my task in this particular was to predict the corn, barley and diesel forecast uh, prediction for the next three weeks. Since client was interested to do the prediction for the three weeks as the contract renews in every 12 weeks. 
so this was very much important to do the prediction for these i was involved in that as well now coming to the demand forecast demand forecast is same as what i just explained you where you are basically looking for the demand of particular commodity what it is likely to be in next two months four months or so on so now coming to the military project i also got a one military project this is the one example that i have given for the different different business domain so this can be uh, there was a one example a specific case that i personally followed and i i worked on so that was actually i i, I had a military client who was facing problem with the servicing of a tanker so tanker servicing was not happening on time and it was getting delayed or by miss due to certain uh, due to some reasons and and it was a problem by because there was a 50 uh, tankers in a batch and it was associating a 1 crore cost for entire year because servicing if you, if your tanker is not serviced it will not be um, properly consuming the oil and the uh, fuel that you are providing to it and then fuel uh, uh, you know the, it was consuming a lot of fuel that is you know for the entire batch and there are there were around 6 to 7 batches for those there was a cost annual cost that was associated is 1 crore so that's when you can do and prepare a, that, you know in this kind of scenario you can prepare a machine learning predictive model which can predict the servicing time in advance Consider, taking the advantage of the linear regression and the logistic regression for example you want to, to to understand how before we should understand that this how much time a particular tankers is left for the servicing so it will gives you days Four days, five days, six days. For example, you wanted to tell whether this particular tanker is about to service or not. So you will get output in binary. For example, classification more in, in the same case as classification, which is yes or no. This particular tanker is to service or not. You will get yes. This particular tanker is about to service or not. You will again get no. So these are few cases that you can be utilizing. And there's a last industry which is IT and K2 industry where you can be utilizing these cases. now i think this is entire road map that i have covered quickly uh, in in this uh, time and there is a little more to add which i will be adding later in in my videos so basically uh, that will be adding the time series and also explaining each and everything what i have just give, given you the overview about the entire data science so now the the field of data science is always emerging and there are new and new technology which are coming on the way considering chat gpt and it is not only those small thing there are complex complex funda fundamentals fundals which are going around the data science right conversational ai now now how exactly you are you are going to use it so i think in coming upcoming videos i'll be explaining each and everything what i just explained you uh, right now i will be explaining each and every topic let's say if deep learning so i'll be preparing one video for the deep learning if i say neural network i will be preparing one video for the neural network if i say transformer i will be preparing one video for the transformer along with the uh, along with the uh, the research paper that it has published if i say unsupervised machine learning i will be explaining all these things one by one in my upcoming videos i hope this video was very informative if you have watched from the beginning i think you would have liked by now so i i i, uh, I hope you understand it very well and before you are making any transition to the data science industry and keep this road map always handy with you so that you understand where exactly you wished in this particular journey and how far you have to reach again do not just blindly trust on the buzzwords that are around the data science that become a data scientist is very lucrative it's very easy to transition yourself into it so Yeah I hope you like the video with this I'm going to say goodbye to every one of you if you like the video you can hit subscribe and like uh, to my video which will definitely inspire me to create another content and help people like you if this video is being liked by two people that means I might have saved two people's life and then those two people may be convert into the in a compound interest they may be convert into the 20 lakh people yeah it may happen in some time so it definitely motivates me to do what what I just did and I I will be doing So thank you very much